Hello everybody, in this video I have some mixed media art journaling to share with you. These pages were inspired by, um, well basically just some embellishments that I had created for another project a long long time ago, never used and they've just been sitting on a shelf in my craft room for months and months and months and I felt like just doing something with them. But I'll talk about them uh, in more detail a little bit later on because you won't see them for a few minutes but I'm just starting off in my usual way of some masking tape up the center of the pages so all paints and stuff don't seep through and then of course a layer of white gesso and then once the gesso is dry I'm going to go in with a load of Dina Wakely acrylic paints I did spray some water as well to kind of make them well not quite watercolors but kind of more like gouache really you know that sort of in between watercolor and acrylic kind of thing just they would spread out a little bit more but at other stages I didn't like the wateriness so I just did them you know straight on the page I'm just experimenting really playing around with the paints the colors I am using I can't remember the order at least at this stage but um it's all the blues and teal turquoisey sort of colors so at the moment I'm using uh, lapis, sky, ocean and peacock I think and yeah just adding quite a few of those I have sped this up to about three or three and a half times just this little section so you can see what I'm doing with the paints but it's not going to last as long but really adding the different colours I'm not waiting for them to dry in between letting them mix in because they're all of the same colour family I'm not worried about making mud like obviously if I had started adding yellows and oranges and stuff then you would and not drying in between you would get some weird colours going on but as I said as they're all in the same colour family I'm not worried about drying in between layers I added a little bit more water and then as I was drying it I was like oh, I can't be bothered to wait for this to dry so I decided to just to pick it up there with a kitchen towel and it kind of I quite like the effect that made the sort of the white patchy effect and I know you're probably now thinking well, why are you covering up the then but I'm not completely covering up what I'm doing is adding paint and then putting a stencil on top and using a baby wipe to lift that paint back off it's called is it called reverse stenciling I feel like there's a proper art journaling phrase to use that I can never remember but that's what I'm doing I'm putting the paint down wet stencil on top and then a baby wipe to lift the paint off and you can see the paint underneath and you do need to dry between layers of this one because otherwise they're all going to mix and it's just not going to work so I did it with the colour marine first and then I dried that and then here I am doing it with the colour night which might be my favourite of the Dina Wakely colours that beautiful navy and it really stenciled well like especially on the uh, on the right there that looks that was the best stenciling I feel but I thought it needed sort of lightening up a little bit so here I think I'm adding turquoise doing the same thing with that um, the baby wipe when you get like a lot of paint on it that doesn't do the stenciling quite as well the lifting stenciling so I just sprayed a little bit of water on the baby wipe instead of throwing it away and getting a new one and that that worked fine that made it be able to lift the paint up again so once that is all dry I'm going to go in with some collage papers. These papers I'm using are from a set that came from the works a very long time ago so I won't be able to link that unfortunately but there was this page with these sort of scribbly leaves on that have scribbles around the edge of the leaves and they're in the perfect uh, colour scheme for my piece so I'm going to rip those out. They were quite getting quite difficult to rip um, I really wanted to rip exactly around the leaf shape so I'm taking my aqua brush and painting where I want to rip it it simply makes it easier to rip where you want to rip as it were and you less likely to make any mistakes or rip straight into the image or whatever but yes a few of those leaf shapes and I'm going to put those down with collage medium from distress this is the matte collage medium and I was going to start off with the two and then I thought a couple more would look nice and then a couple more and I think I end up with seven in total um I yeah I end up covering up more of the background than I intended but I do like the way it looks in the end so I'm not too bothered about bothered said that weird not too bothered about covering up the background in general I mean it's only paint it's not you know some people get so funny about What's the point of doing all that if you're going to cover it up? Like, well, I enjoy doing it and it's only paint. So, so what, you know, <laughs> and, you know, you figure out as you go what's going to look better. I think the whole point of art journaling is not getting too attached to things like, oh, I painted this and I can't cover it up. But that might be detrimental to your finished piece, if you know what I mean. So 
Don't get so attached to things. Let it flow. Don't worry about covering it up or anything like that. Yeah, just go for it. Anyway, so here are those bits that I was talking about right at the beginning of the video. These were flowers that were fussy cut from um, an AB Studio paper pack, I think, for a project I was creating with that. And I had coloured them with, I think, some Lindy's sprays, um, which are very, very shimmery. And it ended up not going with that project whatsoever. But I didn't want to throw them away because I can't throw away anything, apparently. And as I said, they've just been living on a shelf in my craft room for months and I decided to finally use them. So I thought I would have them going in a kind of diagonal up the middle of my page, but I didn't have enough to fully cover that area. So I thought if I, I grab a focal point to take up that room. So from the Paper Dolls pack from Tim Holtz, I was really torn between the couple and the three ladies, I kept going back and forth, back and forth, but I decided the couple was just a little bit too big. It was, yeah, that was it really. It was just too big for what I wanted. So I decided on the three ladies. And before I start sticking stuff down, I'm taking a white gel pen and going around the, the petals and the shapes of those flowers and leaves, the, the sprays that I had colored them with had really covered up those lines and you couldn't really see the shapes of the flowers very well. So that's what I'm doing, adding those shapes back in with a white gel pen and then on the greener coloured leaves I'm using a black Posca paint pen and I think it makes them look a bit more scribbly, a bit more arty, a bit more art journal-y if you know what I mean. And I, yeah, I really like the way that looks. With the Paper Dolls piece I'm taking my Posca paint pen as well and going around the very, very edges so you don't see that awkward white border around the edge, kind of like you would do with a distress ink or something with an ink blender same sort of principle there and then to prevent my ladies from looking like they are floating when i stick them down i've taken my white posca paint pen and done that little scribbly line scribbly little shelf or something like that that's for them to sit on again so it doesn't look like they're floating in midair it's not necessarily realistic or anything like that strip a washi tape anything like that will do you just have to have them on something again like I said so they're not floating and I'm putting down my little embellishments my flowers and leaves with glossy accents and as you can see they kind of come out either side of the ladies sat down at this point obviously the main parts of my piece are done but I thought you know we need a few little extra bits and pieces I thought some stamping was in order so this is the I don't forget to fly or don't be afraid to fly something like that stamp set from Prima and there's some really beautiful butterflies in there and I'm going to stamp three different types of those, a uh, big one, medium and a small one basically and have them coming in from the sides and it almost looks like these are really tiny, tiny, tiny little people, miniature fairy size people in a bush or something like that with all those <laughs> leaves and flowers and butterflies but you know, whatever, it's abstract, that's what I say for all of my art journal pieces, excuse anything by saying it's abstract. And then I like the butterflies, but I needed something else to add a little bit more depth to the whole piece. So I'm taking this grid kind of stamp from Kazercraft and white brilliance ink. And that's adding, you know, a little bit of texture here and there. And I really, really like the way that looks. Actually, I was really, really, you know, when you do something and you go, yes, I am pleased with this. Well done me. All I really needed now was a another focal point um, or a phrase or some words or something along those lines. So I've chosen this one from Dina Wakeley that says there is no beauty without some strangeness. I just really liked it, to be honest. Stuck that down again with the collage medium. And then I'm going to finish off with some Stabilo Woody pencils. I'm taking this green one and going around the ladies, letting them stand out a little bit more and have a little bit more colour around them. But also going around the leaves with that again just helps add more colour and depth, helps all the different elements stand out in their own way. When I was done with the green I went in with a white one as well and that looked really nice in a couple of places adding a few highlights here and there and then I think I'm going to go in as well with the black Stabilo All Pencil which is pretty much the same thing as the Woody Pencils it looks more professional because it's not a big chunky pencil I think that's the only difference to be honest and I'm using that to go around the little phrase quote piece so that stands out a little bit more a little bit of that around the leaves and stuff as well again 
depth and highlights and all that sort of thing. Around the quote, I activated it with water so it stood out even more around the quote. And then I'm gonna finish with some big white splatters. I thought really chunky, drippy splatters would be ideal for this page rather than little delicate ones. I can't really explain why, I just, that's what I thought would look better. And with that, the page is finished. So there we go. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, relevant links will be in the description box below. Let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. Chat to me down in the comments. I know I say that every time. I've just got used to saying it now. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And um, yep, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye.